Hello YouTubers and thank you for viewing my video review of the Azusa go-kart kit. This is my first go-kart project and I'm pleased to say that it runs. My limited knowledge, tools and parts available has made this quite a challenge. I had to take several trips to the local hardware and automotive stores to find parts as I discovered the needs for them along the way. For this go-kart I chose the inexpensive Harbor Freight 212 Predator engine and instead of going with the often used centrifugal clutch, I went with a torque converter. That decision led to a snowball effect of problems and challenges from the very start. Let's go over the torque converter. It is a Comet brand torque averter, TAV2. The combination of this frame, engine, and torque converter limited me to only using one of the three available mounting hole sets, the middle one. However, the torque converter will not fit onto the Predator 212 engine out of the box. I had to have a friend mill down one of these support ribs because it interferes with the engine's oil neck. After that, I still had to cut the corner off the oil plug. Furthermore, once I had the torque converter fitted to the engine, this setup no longer fits onto the go-kart's frame. I had another friend build me a two inch spacer to raise the engine to create clearance for the torque converter. Once I did that, I still needed to have the engine move forward. So the slots in the frame's engine mounting plate needed to be made longer in the forward direction. Finally, the engine could be mounted and all seems great. Not so. The seat can now no longer be installed because the engine has been moved forward. The solution to that is to cut the frame and make it longer. Let's continue to look at the drive system. With a torque converter such as this one and staying with the left and right positioning on the standard mounting plate, it just so happens that the live axle sprocket needs to be in the center of the cart. The live axle's key way tapers off exactly in the middle so I could not install the quarter inch key. The solution was to move the entire axle off center to the right. I chose to use a compression hub with a two piece sprocket. A compression hub evenly clamps around the shaft as opposed to the kit's provided hub that uses two set screws. The beauty about the two piece sprocket is that you can easily take it off the hub without taking the axle out. Installed with a sprocket is a matching sprocket guard. As you can see, I have some hose clamps installed on the axle. These are to keep the sprockets, brakes, left wheels, and right wheels keys in place as they will move in the keyway and fall out. Another way to keep them in place is to use Loctite. Extending the frame means that the originally provided brake rod no longer reaches the brake. I simply went with steel cable and some clamps to make up the additional distance needed. I didn't like the action or feeling of the throttle and brake pedals when they were touching their mounts on the frame. I installed a little rubber washer to pair pedal. A little note about painting. Don't paint the steering shaft. The collars and bearings will no longer fit and you won't be able to install the steering shaft at all. I'm not extremely pleased with the quality of welding, fabrication and fitment of parts. The right wheel spindle bracket is not welded vertically. The steering hoop's lower arms were nowhere close to lining up with their mounts on the frame. I had to use ratchet straps and a mallet to install it. The pedal's bend stops are not bent to 90 degrees. So number one, mine fell rearward because they missed a mount that serves as a positive stop. And number two, because I could not bend them all the way to true 90 degrees. So during a hard right hand turn, the left wheel's tie rod actually activates the brake. The frame should go through a quality audit to inspect for burrs. The engine's mounting plate should be heavier gauge. And this may sound like petty things, but I feel that for the money I've spent on this, it isn't too much to ask for. Having learned so much in this project, I feel that a used frame for much less money might have been better value. A little note about the oil level switch. During hard right turns, 
the low oil sensor is activated and turns off the engine. The solution here is to follow the yellow wire from the housing. It will come to a connector. Carefully disconnect this wire. The female end and its wire can be used with a kill switch. In the end, the extra time, extra money, and lots of patience paid off. The Harbor Freight engine starts on the first pull. The torque converter is amazing between giving you torque when needed and speed when torque is not as necessary. It's nice to build it with brand new parts. I did a speed test once and I got up to 18 miles per hour. My next step is to install a stage one engine upgrade. I'll post a video with the results. Stay tuned.